With the release of the new battle tome for Soul Blight Gravelords, I found myself reading through the new Vampire Dynasties and falling in love with the bestial Viacos Dynasty. But this line in particular caught my interest. Many granted the blood kiss by the Viacos Vampire are swiftly overwhelmed by this curse, reduced to a bestial state not too dissimilar to that of the hated Abhorrence. This immediately conjured a creature in my mind that held the familiar form of a Crypt Flayer, but with a more wolf-like nature than that of a disillusioned cannibal. Fortunately, the release of the Soul Blight Battle Tome was accompanied by a model that would be perfect for both my needs in a kit and also as a rule set. It was, of course, the Look of Vi and Vengorian Lord. I'm Pete the Wargamer, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I built a Viacost Dynasty Vengorian Lord. I'll be giving this guide a difficult rating of 3 dead animal bits out of 5. It doesn't require many kits or tricky trimming, but does involve a lot of sculpting. I started off with the Look of Eye kit. Now this model has proven to be a little dividing. Some people like the half vampire, half dragon centaur thing, but others were not so impressed. Personally, I don't mind it, but I had other plans for this kit anyway. I began by removing all the parts required to build the main body of the Vengorian Lord, leaving the top armoured vampire half alone. Once clipped away, these components were then cleaned up of their mold lines and sprue tabs. My immediate plan was to replace the vampire half of the body with one of the large wolf heads from the Space Wolves Thunderwolf Cavalry Kit, essentially turning this centaur into more familiarly shaped beast. I did toy with using Femrisium wolf heads here. But they are a little smaller, and I felt that the Thunderwolf head was a better scale to the rest of the body. After doing a few comparisons of the head against the temporarily assembled Vengorian torso, I could see that I needed to place it slightly forward. Being in front of the shoulders would look more natural than being placed above them. But first, I had to cut away the vampire's back from the rest of the components. The belt around the midriff seemed like a good clean line to me, so I used this as a guide for my saw and removed the torso as neatly as possible. I then cleaned up the cut, removing some of the rough edges with my scalpel. With the vampire torso separated from the rest of the body, I was able to do a dry fit once more. This now gave me a much better idea of how the head would fit against the body. I could see that by making my cut above the belt, I was now left with a strange protrusion between where I intended the shoulder blades to be. In hindsight, I should have just made my initial cut a lot lower, but it wasn't a problem to fix. I just removed the protruding pieces of belt with my clippers and then trimmed the area smooth with a knife. With the adjustments to the torso made, I could then begin to assemble some of the models. I didn't need everything yet, however, so I just glued together the two torso halves and to this attached both of the arms and the legs. Once assembled, I did one more final comparison with the head to check how it would look with the shoulders. Attaching the wolf head with just glue wouldn't quite work here. Neither of the contact points on the back of the head and around the neck area of the Vengorian Lord were smooth enough to give me a good strong bond. So of course, I turned to pinning. I began by drilling a hole into the back of the wolf's head and then I drilled another into the torso, just between the shoulders. I did this with a one millimeter drill bit and I made both holes at least a few millimeters deep. The pin was created by supergluing some 1mm florus wire into the head. I gave the glue a chance to cure and then clipped it down so that just a centimeter or two were left protruding from the neck. With more superglue, this protruding wire was then inserted into the hole in the torso. I used this small window of time before the superglue cured to make some adjustments to the position of the head. The wire used here was quite malleable so I was able to bend it around until I achieved the desired neck position. By this point, I had the rough shape of my Viacos Vangorian Lord, but I had a few problems. The huge gaping hole in its back being the most obvious one, but I also needed to bulk out the shoulders. Currently, this area was looking far too lithe. The legs were sufficiently bulky, but the shoulders and back were far too slender to allow for that suspension of disbelief that this creature could actually fly. To fix both of these issues, I turned to some milliput. Like green stuff, it's a two-part epoxy putty, but I find it much easier to smooth out and blend into my desired shape. Its finish is maybe not as plastic-like as green stuff, but it does lack some of that elasticity. 
but this wouldn't be a problem for me here. I just wanted to sketch out some of the rough musculature across the shoulders and down the back. This would fix both the hole and also help to bolt things up a bit. But as I intended to add green stuff over this, the finished texture wasn't important. So I began by rolling out a few sausage shapes. One of these was added to the center of the back, following the spine, and the others were added over the shoulders. I used plenty of water here to help me smooth out the putty and to prevent it from sticking to my fingers and tools. Once I had the basic layout achieved, I then added some more milliput to represent some additional muscle groups and also to incrementally bolt things out until I was happy with how the model was looking. I found it helpful to use some reference photos here, but don't worry about getting things anatomically perfect. This area would be covered over with green stuff, so I just needed to get a rough outline. I continued this until I was left with the following. Milliput has about an hour or so of being easily workable, so you can keep making small adjustments here and there. Once I was happy, I left this secure fully for at least three hours. By building up the area around the shoulders, I had helped to adjust the proportions slightly to create a better overall look. But I should mention that if you're going to try this for yourself, make sure that you don't go too far and allow for further bulking out in the next step. Now that I had sketched out the muscles, I could start to work on the fur. I chose to use green stuff for this step because it's really good at holding fine details, such as fur, and it also has a more plastic-like texture once it's painted, which helps it to blend into the rest of the model. With my putty chosen, I then cut and thoroughly mixed some up. The fur was built up in a series of overlapping layers. The first layer started out as a small ball that was positioned at the base of the spine. To create the fur texture, I used a cocktail stick, the sharp point of which would allow me to create those individual strands of fur. The point of the stick was used in a slight pulling motion. I chose a point for the fur strand to start at and then pulled the point down through the putty, creating a small groove. By repeating this across the putty, I was able to create a series of peaks and troughs which were fine enough to appear like matted strands of hair. However, to stop the wood from sticking to the green stuff, I would frequently dip it into some Vaseline. After this first area was done, I then proceeded to add additional lumps of green stuff to the back. These were added higher each time and also featured a slight overlap. This overlapping combined with the ragged edges created by the first strands really helped to sell the realism of the fur. These layers were built up all the way up to the wolf's head, covering over all the previously applied millipods. I tried not to apply the green stuff too thickly here because I still wanted to retain some of that musculature that I had formed earlier on. With the back completely covered, I then moved onto the shoulders, following the same technique as before. I also used some of the putty to blend the fund wolf head into the rest of the body by adding some additional fur across the top of the head. The final area to add green stuff to was the forearms. Like the legs, I wanted these to feature just a small amount of fur to help sell the wolf aspect. I applied the fur in a bottom to top method instead, reversing the direction of the fur. Once I had finished the application of the green stuff, I left it overnight and allowed it to cure fully. A few of you have asked if I clean the Vaseline after I've applied it. I find that a few quick wipes with some kitchen towel or tissue does a trick and prevents any problems at the painting stage. With the sculpting finished, I just needed to continue the assembly and build up the base before giving the miniature a suitable paint job, which left me with this. And here we have the completed Vyakos Vengorian Lord. I chose a combination of black fur with accents of red to really help tie the model in with other Soul Black Grave Lord units, but also to give it an imposing aspect. I chose a winter themed base as not only would the white snow contrast nicely against the black fur, but it also calls back to the dark freezing forest of Shaish, where the Vyakos hail from. This all combines to create something that would fit nicely among hordes of direwolves whilst also being easily usable as a Vengorian Lord on the tabletop. So let me know what you think of this conversion, and if you enjoy these vampire-themed videos, then be sure to check out my Sigval to Vampire Lord kit bash, and also leave me your suggestions for other conversions you would like to see me tackle. And with that, the final thing to say is a massive thank you to my supporters. Currently, my top supporters on Patreon are Jonathan Hurt, Stuart Smith, 
Berserker, Daniel Dowling, Douglas Wilson, Jake, Jeremy Kaup, Jesse Smith, Casper Strand, Lyconian Primark, Merrick, Mr. Grimm, and Raphael Bayruthi. So a big thank you to you guys, and if you also support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, or you just use my affiliates links. And your help is what keeps this channel alive, and as well as allows me to buy the kits required to build these kinds of conversions. If you would like to help me out, then you can check out my description for all of the relevant links. And so until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.